Hi everyone, Aaron here and welcome back to the channel. I had a really fun video ready to go for today. It was a reaction video to the Red Table Talk discussion Jada Pinkett Smith did with Leah Remini about Scientology. And as I went to upload it, I got hit with a content ID strike, not for Jada's video, but for a very short clip of Andy Cohen Live that Jada used in her own video. So anyway, it'll probably take me 30 to 60 days to get that resolved. So since that one's not ready to go, I hope you will all join me one more time checking in on Pasco County's most interesting social experiment. That is Grant Cardone's most outspoken Scientology recruit, Tom Cruise's number one most enthusiastic fan. I am speaking, of course, of Tampa Brad. I think I've done three or four videos about Brad so far. Brad joined Scientology during the pandemic. He joined Scientology based on watching Grant Cardone content. Grant was recommending Dianetics and Scientology. Brad checked it out and over the last 18 or so months, he has become a very enthusiastic Scientologist and has been documenting his journey into, through, and up Scientology's levels on his YouTube channel. Since I started covering Brad's content, I have been contacted by a number of people who are friends, and family members of Brad who are concerned about how deep he's getting into Scientology, are concerned about how he's going to get out. They're concerned about the extent to which Brad has brought Scientology into the workplace. At this point, most of the employees uh, at the company that he runs are Scientologists. Uh, Brad's been exerting a lot of pressure on his employees to join Scientology. Doing things like that can have disastrous consequences in terms of lawsuits against the business. Brad's company is acquiring another small business that is also owned by a Scientologist, and most of that company's employees are also Scientologists. Brad is very quickly going down that route where when and if the day comes that he chooses to leave Scientology, Scientology will be exerting such a strong influence over him, his life, his business life, his family life, uh, that we're, we're looking at a very potentially messy situation sometime down the road. So the content I wanna take a look at today is a video Brad uploaded in September, 2021 called How and Why I Joined Scientology. I wanna look at this video and use it uh, as something that, uh, to answer one of the most common questions that comes up, which is how in the hell is anyone, any young, remotely successful, remotely educated individual who's been exposed to the world, has full access to the internet with everything that's out there about Scientology these days. How in the hell is anyone still joining Scientology? Let's let Brad serve as the answer to that question. Let's use Brad as a case study and let's jump into this video. And just before we do that, let me quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, me. If you're looking to buy or sell a home anywhere in the Tampa Bay area and you would like to work with me, message me at Aaron at dreamrealty.com. All right, now we can begin. Got my AirPod, let's rock and roll. Hey, what up, it's Tampa Brad and uh, thunderous clap today because I've got a thunderous topic to share with you. So you may or may not be familiar with this, but I'm a huge Grant Cardone fan and I was recently turned on to Grant's material uh, by my good friend, Matt Klein, actually, who recommended him to me. I read the book, Seller Be Sold, which is <clears throat> an amazing sales book. If you run an organization or you do sales or you have a business, you need to read Seller Be Sold, it's incredible. But then I went on to read Grant's other, other books, 10X Rule, uh, Be Obsessed or Be Average, even Closer survival guide, all great books. But what I noticed is in every single book, he mentioned one, one time too, not like, he wasn't like blasting about it the whole book. It would be somewhere in the th three quarter-ish out of four quarter section of the book. Uh, he would say, if you want a book to really understand your mind, read Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard. It'll really change the way you look at your mind. And so back to selling, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so right away we have just a very simple mechanism at play of an, of an appeal to authority. Brad has someone he looks up to, he has someone he's learning from, Grant is, uh, Grant is acting uh, essentially in a mentor capacity to Brad, and Grant keeps mentioning Dianetics uh, and Scientology, one or the other or both. I would say that's more or less a typical way of how someone ends up getting interested in Scientology or Dianetics in the first place. Blah, blah, blah. And I would always be like, God damn it, that's that freaking Scientologist thing, isn't it? And uh, I'd be like, whatever, it's, 
it's whatever. But then I, I would I would continue to see Grant stuff and I would continue to understand more about how much success he's having, how quickly he's moving up, how quickly he's accumulating wealth, accumulating a network, being able to move mountains and get stuff done and do huge 35,000 person business conferences for three days. <clears throat> and so finally I'm like, man, Okay, I know that's that Scientology thing. I know that people don't like it, but let me think back to my own life experience, right? I'm like, I got divorced when I was 23. I think I was officially divorced when I was 24, but started when I was 23. Got kicked out of the army when I was 25. I'm like, okay, all the things that, that I used to believe were, oh, and, I, and I'm also like completely countercultural, love breaking the rules, and I'm like, most things that people preach are total BS. So I'm like, okay. Think about this. I'm like, all right, most people don't like the Scientology thing and they say that it's evil and a cult and blah, 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 whatever, L. Ron Hubbard, some alien shit or whatever they say. And so I'm like, I, I just love it when uh, people try to straw man the arguments or the criticisms that former Scientologists actually have about Scientology by saying stupid shit like that. L. Ron Hubbard is an alien. It's so dumb. Well, judging by how they felt about the other things that I now do, there's a decent chance that they're wrong. So, what other things do you do now that people have very um, poor opinions of that you think they're wrong about? What could it hurt to read it? So I went and actually got the book, Dianetics by Aaron Hubbard. That's this, it has a volcano on it. And uh, I read the book, I read it, I go through it. And by the way, Dianetics is about uh, your mind, basically. It's, it's L. Ron Hubbard's research into the mind. And so I'm like, all right, everything he's saying in this book squares 100% with my experience of reality. So he's talking about the general message of Dianetics, which is that your emotions, your reactions, your behaviors, the things that are holding you back in life are actually not under your control and are not your fault. And by using the Dianetics auditing counseling therapy, you can fix those things. That is a message that can appeal to people. The idea that they are not fundamentally to blame for the problems and difficulties that they encounter in life, but there is a simple solution. You know, some of it I couldn't really follow, so I was like, I mean, I, whatever, I don't really know what he's talking about when he talks about things that you experience when you're actually in, in your mother's womb and getting engrams there. I was like, well, I, I, I don't really follow that, but whatever. So we go, I go through it, and by the end of the book, I'm like, well, this, is, this doesn't sound crazy. This sounds like it's basically self-improvement, right? Like Tony Robbins-esque. And so I'm like, well, I mean, I guess the next thing to do, I mean, he wrote Dianetics and then he started into Scientology and Dianetics uh, informed Scientology and is kind of the, the forerunner to it. So quick comment, for those of you who may not know, Dianetics these days is the same thing as Scientology. But back when it was first released, Dianetics was marketed and sold as a science of the mind. It was sold as an alternative to psychotherapy. In Dianetics, there is no mention of anything about spiritual beings or past lives. And I'm mentioning all that because if you were to read Dianetics, you would probably go, what's in this book doesn't seem to reflect everything I've heard about Scientology. And it's because the book Dianetics actually has very little to do with the subject of Scientology. So I go, I go and I'm like, well, I mean, I guess I know I live in Tampa, Florida and there's something in Clearwater, right? And so I look up like nearest Scientology, nearest church of Scientology or Scientology organization. And so I'm like, where like where do i go to find out more about this so i literally submit a contact form that evening maybe at like seven o'clock i get a call from this girl destiny who's now a good friend of mine destiny if you're watching hi you're awesome destiny asked me if i wanted to come in and take a tour of the ebor church of scientology and see what they do there and so i was like well yeah i think it's interesting that he says ebor the church of scientology that actually delivers to people is in tampa there is what they call the ebor testing center that is sort of an extension of the Tampa org that is over in Ybor City. I find it interesting that in response to an online reach, they would schedule the person for an appointment to go to the Ybor test center instead of to the Scientology org in Tampa. I would, I, that's not what I would have guessed. Let's set you up for to come in and meet Jen. So I, I come in and I talk to her and what really, you know, she, uh, to be honest, she kind of walked me through some stuff that I wasn't really that interested in, like, and this sounds bad, but like Scientology does a lot with human rights uh, and anti-drug initiatives. That's a huge one for them is uh, it go, like going against uh, narcotics and narcotics abuse and, and a bunch of other things about human rights and stuff that although I do care about. Brad cannot really be faulted at this point for 
not knowing that Scientology doesn't really do hardly anything in those areas. Scientology doesn't really give a damn about any of those things. They put on a bunch of pomp and circumstance and they stage some events and they, they distribute a few dollars here and a few dollars there to basically do photo ops uh, of events in these different areas like human rights and um, whatever, that, whatever else he just mentioned. One of the problems Scientology has is there's nothing churchy about it and uh, Scientology uh, craves acceptance as a legitimate bona fide religious organization. So they have actually taken steps to do things that they think make them look like other religious organizations, but these activities are things Scientologists don't give a damn about. But Brad doesn't know this yet. About those things, on some level, they weren't, that wasn't my present issue, right? My present issue was, I felt like my life, although it was going up a little bit, was going up very slowly. I felt like it could go way faster, and if I felt like I wasn't achieving my full potential. That was the real bottom. The fact that he had been kicked out of the army after, by the way, graduating from the West Point Military Academy with a degree in physics, kicked out of the military, I'm sure that's an interesting story, and divorced at the age of 23. I think that tells us a little bit about Brad's general state of mind at this stage of his life, where he has stacked up at this young age some pretty uh, significant failures, you might say. Um, combine that with someone like a Grant Cardone, uh, this big authority figure for Brad. It's hard for me to imagine, I admit, someone looking at Grant Cardone and um, seeing his ridiculous spiel that he puts on that is so obviously fraudulent and going, yes, I would like to be like that. But you know, people like that exist. And we can see how this might've been kind of a perfect storm for Brad, uh, the right time in his life to, you know, have someone suggest he tried Dianetics and Scientology line of it is I was nowhere near achieving my full potential as a as a human being really as as someone who has this lifetime and I think can do amazing things but I wasn't getting here it wasn't happening and I didn't know how to make it happen when I shared that with Jen she was like okay well why don't you take a personality test and so we can actually go through and see what that says about your life and how you're feeling and how you're doing so I sit down and I take this maybe like 150 question personality test and it comes back, it's, it's called the OCA, the Oxford Capacity Analysis. It's actually a test developed by Oxford as I understand that basically. <laughs> oh, I try not to pick on Brad. I try not to pick on Brad. I don't, I don't wanna pick on someone just because they're a Scientologist. That's not how I roll. But let me tell you something, um, Oxford has literally nothing to do with the personality test that L. Ron Hubbard chose to call the Oxford Capacity Analysis Test or OCA. And he only called it that to create the exact effect that we are seeing in Brad, to create the impression that Oxford University had something to do with this test. LRH was just trying to give this test some sort of credibility by calling it the Oxford Capacity Analysis Test. And uh, oh, the reason I said I didn't want to pick on him, I'm sorry. If you're going to assume that the OCA has to do with Oxford just because the word Oxford is, is in its name, I, I, I think I have to say that we are dealing with someone in below average intelligence. Because I promise you one thing, no one at Scientology told Brad that Oxford was associated with the OCA. That's just something he's saying because it happens to have the word Oxford in the name. Uh, assesses people's personality in different categories. And when I got the test back, what I realized is it was a classification of my personality in different categories. But what it showed that's, that was different from any other personality test I'd seen before is it basically expressed that there is an optimal personality, that there's a way of being that is optimal. In many of Brad's videos, I have heard him describe the OCA test and the graph and, uh, and, and describing it as somehow indicating an optimum type of personality. I have never um, thought of the OCA test that way. First of all, the OCA test is strictly a sales tool and it does have like a dozen or so personality traits, but by personality traits, it will be like extroverted, introverted, um, I, I, I can't even think of them. I'll find it and I'll put it up on the screen here. And yes, I guess the personality traits at the top would be considered desirable and, uh, and those at the bottom would be undesirable. But I've never thought of the OCA as depicting an ideal personality type because in reality, it's not a personality test. It's a sales tool. But the OCA test had quite an effect on Brad. He has mentioned this thing like four or five times in his videos that I've watched. And is better than being on the other end of the spectrum. So I was like, this is what I want. I'm like, 
I have always known on some level that there's a, it's better to be happy than it is to be sad. Brad is a Scientology registrar's wet dream. He seems like the easiest person to sell to. It's better to be outgoing than it is to be introverted. There's, there were all these different items. Uh, it's better to be self-determined rather than waiting for direction. I, and I've always known that all those things were the case, but seeing, like actually seeing that a, an organization also agreed with that, I was like, wow, this actually squares a lot with my beliefs. So I was like, okay, so what do I do here? So she's like, okay, well, what I recommend for you is you do this course called Overcoming Ups and Downs in Life. She said it's a $50 course. It'll probably take you two or three weeks to do it. You buy the little book, right? It's, it's 50 bucks for the book, and then you do the course for however long it takes you. And so I was like, okay, cool. Get the book, grab like another book, like I think, uh, like one of the fundamental Scientology books, grab that as well for like 20 bucks. So I went in, spent 70 bucks, got some more information and started the course. And since then, I think I've done at this point, uh, seven of those basic courses. I've also done an advanced course called Student Hat, which literally teaches you how to educate yourself because in normal. So this is interesting. Uh, first of all, the first introductory course that he did, Overcoming Ups and Downs in Life. That is the introductory Scientology course that first starts teaching a person about suppressive persons uh, SPs and PTSness, suppressive persons and potential trouble sources. Suppressive persons are the big bad anti-Scientologist, anti-social personalities. Uh, uh, examples that L. Ron Hubbard uses of, of suppressive persons or anti-social personalities are the big ones like Hitler and Stalin and Mao and he, he mentions Dillinger, I think was a bank robber. Uh, they don't, they, they, at this point, they don't tell you that, by the way, that will, uh, will, we will eventually tell you that your mother is a suppressive person when she um, refuses to do what the ethics officer tells her to do. So I find it interesting that the first course he did in Scientology was the one where they ta start talking about suppressive people. Um, and he mentions he just did the student hat course. Uh, that is a major Scientology course. There's some Scientologists who've done that course three, four, five times, and I guess the more times you do it, the easier it might be to think back on the student hat as kind of an easy uh, entry-level course. It is not. The student hat is a major course. By the time you finish student hat, you are a Scientologist. So by the time Brad recorded this video in September 2021, I guess that's 10 months ago, Brad had already done a crap load of introductory services, He'd had some introductory, probably life repair auditing, and he had already switched over to doing major Scientology courses and had finished it. I mean, the student hat course might officially say that it's a 40 or an 80 hour course. It's, I would say it's more realistically a 200 hour course. School systems, you're not taught how to educate yourself. You're not actually taught how to learn and what prevents you from learning. This course addresses that. Uh, and I've done some of what's called auditing. And so auditing is what, what you see that people freaks people out for some reason, where you sit and you hold the cans and you have an auditor across from you, like where Paul is sitting for me. And they're reading the meter reaction through the cans of however your body is reacting to what they're saying and to what you're saying. And so in doing all of that, uh, I've, I've achieved actual results in my life. So We've added two people to our staff. We just let one go. We were at, at three people up on our staff in Home Love Construction. Uh, I went from owning zero real estate to owning over $1.3 million in real estate. Uh, and uh, my, my income and my household income has probably gone up about 5X. So, and I'm not saying that there's like a little tip on that. So normally when a Scientologist is out there pitching Scientology to other people and they're telling stories like this, I would be very suspicious of whether it was even true. However, I believe what we are seeing here is the actual genuine statement of what has helped cement in Brad's mind that Scientology is a workable technology or that auditing in some kind of spiritual sense, you get auditing, you improve yourself spiritually and good things happen to you in other areas of your life. I believe Brad is being genuine here. And this is one of the main reasons I wanted to review this video, because people go, how can anybody join Scientology? And the answer is taking these little steps 
and somewhere these little introductory steps you are told early on in the sales process that doing these things will help you to accomplish certain things in your life now that's what Scientology registrars are always going to tell you about any Scientology service they sell you so once you start doing these services you're also in a state of mind where you're like this is going to help me accomplish something I've paid money to do this service I'm being told it's going to help me accomplish things in other areas of of their life and many times what happens is uh, well actually there's a Scientology saying you get what you put your attention on you also have you know the placebo effect is a real thing if you tell someone this is gonna help you accomplish X it can in many cases whether what you gave them was good uh, bad effective ineffective you know whatever the case may be so was Scientology directly responsible for the improvements Brad saw in other areas of his life or not I don't know Brad doesn't know no one knows it's possible, but what I wanted to use as an example is whether it really was the cause of the improvements or not doesn't matter. What matters is that at this stage in Brad's journey, he believes it is. He believes Scientology was the cause. Once you start believing that, that is all that matters to you. Once someone like Brad has plunked down a bunch of money for auditing and courses and they start seeing improvements in their lives, that person no longer gives a shit about anything they hear in the world about Scientology abuses, about families being destroyed, about elder abuse, child abuse, financial fraud, the fraudulent nature of LRH's military career, uh, the second wife LRH says he never had, the kids LRH abandoned, and that is how someone gets into and quickly sucked up into Scientology, where all they care about is their personal experience and at that point in time their personal experience is still positive so they're going to keep going and they're not really interested in hearing anything else that you just read when you go on it's like in order to 5x your household's income do this it's not like that it's you being put in a position and this is this is just what i experienced by the way but what i experienced is i was put in a position where i had to confront how i was living my life and was asked very bluntly, is that how you want to live your life? And okay, if that's not a yes, how do you want to live your life? What do you actually want to achieve? What do you feel is right for you? What do you feel is wrong for you? How committed are you to actually doing those things that you feel are right? So in Brad's version, in Brad's, you know, his version of his Scientology journey, uh, as long as you are paying for your courses, paying for your auditing, um, showing up, doing the things that are being asked of you, doing the things that are required of you. The, uh, when, you when, when Brad goes into a Scientology organization, he is surrounded by people who, for the most part, genuinely like him, generally admire him, generally want to help him. And it's possible that Brad's Scientology experience won't actually turn sour for quite some time. We can see in this case, you had a young guy who was, it seems, actually quite struggling in life. Kicked out of the army and divorced by the age of 23, that's kind of a big deal. You know, I have some other information from people in Brad's family who have contacted me, but I think what we should see here is someone who was struggling and he enters an environment where people are promising him solutions. And he starts on the path and he's seeing some results and he continues to be surrounded by people who seem to want to help him seem to be supportive of him, are cheerleading the successes that he feels he's having in life, and are reinforcing in his mind that Scientology is the cause of that success. This whole thing can create a positive feedback loop that is quite, um, that can be quite addicting. And I think, as Brad has continued to post videos on his channel, I think we can see that Scientology to Brad has become more and more addicting. And that's really what it came down to is getting 100% to self-actualization. And I'm nowhere, I mean, this is like just the beginning. There's so much more that, that I can get into and that I can actually do. And I can, I can feel that there's a long, long, long way to go. But that said, even the immediate payoff has been massive, huge for me. And so I'm, I'm going to do a bunch of videos answering questions about uh, why some people think it's a cult, why some people think it's a closed organization, why some people think uh, like you have to become a member, why it's like hard to... Those were the videos that Scientology made him take down. If you guys, if you have not yet seen the video I did 
commenting on the video where Brad was talking about having to take down videos. I'll put a link to it up above. Uh, Brad, the videos that he just said he was going to do to tackle some of these, uh, answer some of these questions about why Scientology is a cult, Scientology made him take those videos down. They get information about it, or some people feel that way. Um, what Scientologists believe about uh, life, the afterlife, uh, reincarnation, karma, like what, what all, the, all the beliefs are. As I Forgive me for chiming in on this. Why does Brad think the world needs Brad to create videos answering people's questions about Scientology when Scientology spends tens and tens of millions of dollars creating content to answer those very questions? Why does Brad think the world and YouTube needs his answers to these questions? I've been asked a lot whether I think Scientology asked him to start doing these videos and I cannot figure out the answer to that question. My answer for the most part has been no, Scientology doesn't really want people putting up this kind of content. But there's another guy I'm talking to uh, who's a, who was a Twitch streamer when he got into Scientology and when they found out he had a bunch of subscribers, they did ask him to start talking about Scientology online. So I, I just don't know whether Scientology is asking him to do this or not. I understand them, by the way. This is in no way a representation. I don't represent the Church of Scientology. Uh, but. I want to express what I'm seeing as someone who's really new. I mean, it's August right now. I think I did my first, I started my first course in late February. So it's been maybe five months, uh, but it's really been a game changer for me in a way that nothing else has been. Uh, and that is what I wanted to point up in this video. That is what it comes down to. Nobody walks into a church of Scientology wanting to join a cult. Most people who walk into a Scientology organization and do these introductory courses that Brad is doing, they wash out. There's probably a 95% attrition rate of people coming in, doing some sort of an introductory course, and never coming back again. For those who stay, for those who stick, this is the reason why. And this isn't an endorsement. I'm not saying, hey, Scientology will be a game changer for you. No, for those who stick, Something happened in their, in their introductory process, their courses, their auditing in, in their lives that made them go, oh shit, this works. I want more. And it might be, seem hard to believe because what most of us think of when we think of Scientology is uh, you know, all of the very high profile stories that are very good examples of how Scientology destroys lives. But at the lower levels and the introductory levels, this is how people end up getting in and sticking with it. Uh, my girlfriend in some of these videos to share her experience as well because she has had a mind-boggling experience as well and, and literally uh, it's 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 as if it's stripped five years of stress off of her and she feels like basically like a kid again it's then and that's really the the best way that I can put it is it is it's like being able to be an adult but being able to feel like a kid again so uh, that said that's been my experience so far it's been a lot of fun every person that I've met I'm trying to think if there's any exceptions. There's, I mean, I've, I've met maybe like one or two like crotchety old people, but for the most part, every single person that I've met at, at Scientology, uh, at, the, we call, at the org is what we call it, the organization. So like he looks and sounds completely genuine to me. What's interesting is that in Brad's later videos, he does start to get that, uh, to me, that sort of bullshit, gleam salesy look in his eye when he's talking about Scientology. He, he has jumped to the shark and started being a Scientology salesperson. But in this video, Brad is remarkably genuine. And that's what struck me when I watched it. And that's why I wanted to do a review on this. Station uh, is super positive, super outgoing, uh, or, or at least if they're not outgoing, very friendly and willing to talk, you know, not closed off the conversation and uh, is concerned with improving their life and helping me to improve my life and genuinely interested in whether I improve my life or not and gunning for, hey, get better. Like, let's all get better. And how can I help you get better? And uh, like, what, what can we do together to make life even better for all of us? See, for someone who's been struggling in life and has probably been surrounded by people who maybe have been co-signing on to some of his destructive behavior, just imagine now being surrounded by a whole a whole team of people, a whole mess, a whole bunch of young, enthusiastic, interested people, all working to better themselves and others, which is what people who are working in Scientology believe they're doing. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. It's not like all the Scientology staff members show up to work every morning and say, how are we gonna con people today? 
Scientologists believe in what they're doing. Staff members believe in what they're doing. And that belief and that confidence, you can probably imagine how that can become addictive. It's part of the experience. It's part of what makes someone like Brad want to stick with it and hang with that crew. So I've, I've already been able to make some amazing friends. Uh, I've met people who've been in the Sea Org, which is like the, the billion-year commitment thing where it's like, you know, you can't ever get out, they're gonna steal your kids. Not true. Uh, I've, I've just been able to see a, a lot so far. Another example of that stupid straw man argument. What is it that he's saying is not true? There's nothing that he just said. Like, uh, we gotta well, watch this. That's the, the billion-year commitment thing where it's like, you know, you can't ever get out, they're gonna steal your kids. You can't ever get out, they're going to steal your kids. You can get out. No one's ever said you can't get out of the Sea Org. I'm a former Sea Org member. My wife's a former Sea Org member. I've got 100 friends who are former Sea Org members. Leah Remini is a former Sea Org member. Valerie Haney is a former Sea Org member. All, almost all the board members of the Aftermath Foundation are former Sea Org members. And they're going to steal your kids. You can't have kids in the Sea Org. But yes, if your kid joins the Sea Org, you know, good luck seeing them again much after that. Anyway, what a silly statement. Not true. Uh, I've, I've just been able to see a, a lot so far that's like, wow, what people think this is versus what it actually is, is, is totally different. And uh, I mean, to be completely honest, I'm 100% convinced that in 100 years, this will be the dominant world religion as far as not. <laughs> Brad, I'm sorry. I don't like to keep picking on you, but only someone with a very sub average intelligence would say something as fucking stupid as that. The dominant world religion. Brad has no idea that Scientology is 70% smaller today than it was in 1990. The dominant world religion. There's literally, I think the new Australian census just came out recently. And over the last uh, maybe five years, the population of Australia has gone up by 2 million. And the Scientologists, the number of Scientologists in the, in the census have gone down by like 25 or, or five or something like that. There is nowhere in the world that Scientology is growing. Nowhere in the world. Numbers. Uh, there's, there's just no way around it. It's because there's such a high uh, growth rate and there's such a low fallout rate uh, that it's, it's pretty much inevitable <laughs> in my opinion. And when something's right, people tend to recognize that it's right. I heard somebody say the other day, a really interesting thing they said uh once once a being you know you're, you're described as because one of the fundamental beliefs i'll get into real quick in scientology is that you're a spiritual being you're simply using you're controlling a human body right not in like a video game there's not like some room where all the spiritual beings like i'm here it's kind of like that with my body uh but i'm i'm controlling i'm not like if you cut off my hand i don't die right if you cut off my arm i don't die if you cut off my arms and legs i don't die Right, why would you might stop with the rest of my body, right? I can't be killed by killing my body. I'm something else. So, and, and I think most people are kind of in line with that. They know that they're not like a body. But that said, uh, the cool thing that somebody told me the other day is that once a being is exposed to Scientology, it's just a matter of time until they want to know more and they wind up actually digging into it for themselves. What does that even mean? What does that, I know what Scientologists think that means, but just try to think of it rationally as someone who's not in Scientology. Once someone has been exposed to Scientology, it's only a matter of time until they want to know more. Well, yeah, but also that's like saying, it, it's the exact same thing as saying, it's only a matter of time before everyone in the world wants to know more about Scientology. Because I mean, we have the internet. A anyone in the world can be exposed to Scientology. Scientology has so many of these weird sales datums that they use to make salespeople feel like a little better about how many people tell them to go fuck themselves. You know? <laughs> so if you talk to 100 people and 98 people tell you to go get fucked, it's, it's only a matter of time before any being exposed to Scientology eventually wants to know more. That way the registrar can um, focus on, okay, good, then I'll just keep exposing people to Scientology and I, I won't worry so much about how many people tell me to go fuck myself. Because uh, in, in their words, it is truth. And people, you know, beings recognize truth when they see it. So that said, uh, that's been my experience so far. And if you have questions, I'm sure there's, there's lots of people. If you have questions, if you're pissed about what I'm saying, tell me in the comments, please leave a comment. Let me. Brad turned off the comments on his entire YouTube channel. You know what you thought? If you loved what I said, 
leave a comment, let me know what you thought. Uh, but if you have questions for me, or if you have a question that you'd like me to answer, you're like, hey, okay, cool, like I respect that. What about this? You wanna actually know something? Leave a question in the comments. Literally every video on Brad's channel instructs people to leave you know, something in the comments. And just two days ago, Brad turned off comments for every video on his channel because ever since I started reviewing his videos, people are trying to like wake him up to the true information about Scientology and he just can't handle it. And I will make a video answering it. Like we have a lot of availability to, to make videos like this. We can make them basically whenever we want. So uh, I definitely wanna make videos answering your specific question and uh, let me know, you know, let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Did you not like this? Do you have questions? What are the questions? I'd like to answer all those for you. So uh, I hope you're doing amazing. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate your attention and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace. All right. Well, there you go. I think this really is instructive. I mean, this is a real case example. How many opportunities do we have to see someone in real life, in real time, someone who was not raised in Scientology, didn't know anything about Scientology until they were in their mid twenties or whatever, joining Scientology, doing it publicly, documenting it on YouTube, giving us the opportunity to analyze it. I'm kind of excited that he's doing these and I hope he keeps doing them because I will keep reviewing them. All right, everyone, that's all I have for now. Thank you all who watched until the very end and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, 